Hi, my name is Amy C. Wanninger, and I've been getting a lot of questions lately about the closed captioning I use in my live virtual events. So I wanted to show you exactly how I do this. If you can see my screen right now, you know that this is the, like the presenter's view of a slideshow in PowerPoint. And there's a feature here that I didn't know existed until just a few weeks ago. Right here, um, under the live view of the screen, of the presenter's screen. Now, of course, what my audience would be seeing is on another screen, right? It's, it's this main square or main rectangle um, in full screen view. But I have my own view of it right here. And then, you know, the next slide is over here just to kind of orient you to where we are. But underneath this live view on the presenter side, there are a couple of icons, five, six icons. And this one, this last one before the circles, toggles subtitles off and on. Let me show you. I'm going to click it. I'm going to say one, two, three. And then I'm going to click it again. One, two, three. And now I'm back. And you can see how it automatically starts listening to my speech and converting it to text. What I love about this feature is number one, it's absolutely free if you have PowerPoint. Most of us have PowerPoint. You don't have to pay for an outside service. Number two, it's much more accurate than a lot of the voice to text services that I've used in the past. So I've used uh, Temi, uh, T E M I dot com. And <laughs> although in this case it's not very accurate, T E M I dot com. And I will use that service for, uh, you know, converting videos and getting transcripts so that I can you know, convert my transcripts into blog articles or, you know, content for my books or whatever. But um, I usually have to do a lot of revisions. This tool within PowerPoint is really good. There's another thing, though, that it offers that I think is pretty amazing. And that is you can actually translate in real time. So let me show you how to do this. You go to subtitle, you click these three dots, subtitle settings, more settings. And then you pick the spoken language, in my case, that would be English, and you can select a subtitle language that is different from your language. So let's do this in Spanish. Now you can see that my subtitles are showing up in the Spanish language rather than in English. I'm going to go back. I'm going to pick English again. And so this is one way you can make your online presentations more accessible to people who have hearing issue, you know, hearing, um, sorry, I'm losing my words, who are deaf or hard of hearing, um, or even people who have language barriers. Um, if you know about them in real time. Now, for me, I put a clause in my contract that the organizers need to provide live closed caption or translation services, you know, if they know of someone or, you know, if someone asks for them, if someone in the audience needs them. Um, and I ask the organizers to do that at their expense because I feel like that's something that they need to do for every speaker at their event, um, not just for me. However, um, I know a lot of organizations, you know, that would be a burden for them. And a lot of times people don't speak up when they need closed captioning. Um, they, you know, they don't you know, want others to perceive them as being, um, as asking for something, right? So this is an easy way to do it that puts the burden of responsibility on you, the speaker, um, but also you know, 
reinforces even with people who have, you know, full hearing that, you know, they can read your words while you're speaking and that helps reinforce your message with them. So I will stop jabbering now and hope that this was helpful for you, helpful for your audiences, helpful for your speaking clients, and even in meetings that you have, um, if you use this feature, it can make a big difference.